Hello, everybody. Welcome to Tour Tuesday. It's good to see you all. Thank you so much for coming. It's a beautiful day out. So um, I thank you very much for spending your beautiful evening with me. Um, we won't keep you very long, uh, but we do have some fun stuff to talk about. I am Sandy Borowski, Vice President of Tours at Star Tours, and I'm here with my co-host, Pete Borowski. Uh, he's sitting next to me. He is not in Utah. Sorry, everyone. Um, and we have some special guests here. We have uh, folks that I'm going to introduce you to again later, but Barbara from, uh, from Cosmos and Globus and Ryan from Western Leisure. You guys can wave. And we've got two tour directors with us today, Jean and Evie. So hey, Jean and Evie. It's good to see everybody and some new faces on this Zoom screen and some faces that I recognize. So thank you all for coming either for the first time or the fifth time I think we're on. You know, I always like to start with a poll. So I'm gonna pull up my poll. It's just for fun. You know, this is like just, you know, get things started here. The really deep, serious questions that I have to ask I'm curious, how many of you still have a home phone line, right? So tell me, how many of you still have a, oh, I see first, first few people are not saying that they have a home phone line. So um, that's my first question. You can answer it that you still have a home phone line and you use it. You have a home phone line, but you don't use it at all. And you don't have a home phone line and you only use your cell phone. And here's a question, how many spam calls do you get each day? None, are so you the luckiest many. person on earth? Uh, do you get one to two daily, three to five daily or too many to count? I hope that's not you. So this is just for fun and you can fill it out. We'll take about 30 seconds to um, get this filled out. I'm curious to see. I'll share my answers with you. I have a home phone line, but I don't use it at all. Um, it just comes in the bundle that we get from, what is it, Verizon, Pete? I don't know. <laughs> it comes in the bundle, so we don't use it though. And uh, today I've only gotten one spam call. So, you know, it was, it was not a bad day for a spam call for me. Uh, normally it's probably two to three, so, which is annoying. Um, so let's see, almost all of you voted. So I'm gonna end the poll and I will share the results with you. All right, so 61% of you still use your home phone line. I'm a little surprised, wow. All right, 11% um, of you have a home phone line like me, but you don't use it at all. And about 28% of you only use your cell phone. So that's interesting. Um, some of you still have a home phone line, good to know, good to know. So we'll always try to call you at home first before we try your cell. And how many spam calls do you get each day? Looks like the majority are somewhere between one to two or three to five. Isn't that a bummer? Nobody said none. Nobody here is the luckiest person on earth. I am so sorry. <laughs> so, um, but that was a fun poll. So thank you for sharing that information with you, with me and all of us. Let me just um, get started here. I'm going to share my screen with you. And there we go. Are you guys give me a thumbs up if you can see that screen. Awesome. We're going to start. It's our May 18th version of Tour Tuesday. Good to see everybody here. I would like to introduce Ryan. Ryan is from Western Leisure. So go ahead, Ryan, and tell us a little bit about yourself and about Western Leisure. Yeah, yeah, thank you so much for the introduction, Sandy. And um, hello, everyone. Like she said, my name is Ryan Halk. I'm the director of sales for Western Leisure Tours. So I'll tell you a little bit more about us. Uh, this year, we are actually celebrating 42 years of business, uh, which makes us the oldest full service custom tour operator in the Western US. Uh, and really, we're just known for designing and, and personalizing group tours that are customized to satisfy our clients' interests, as well as uh, the traveler's budgets. So we've been working with Star Tours now. I mean, how long has it been, Sandy? It's been quite a few years now, I think, right? Yeah, yeah, it's been yeah. a long time. And we've known, I've known the owner of Western Leisure um, for uh, probably 20 years. Yeah. So, um, yeah. so we go way back. 
And really, I mean, we've just really enjoyed the partnership and helping create, uh, you know, tours for SARS travelers to enjoy the national parks that we have out west here, develop the best routing and timing to kind of get the most out of your trip and really just kind of take the, the guesswork out of the best things to do and places to stay and, and stuff like that. So um, really at this point, it's just super exciting to be talking about tours again, uh, getting people you know, out of their house, out on the road and exploring the you know western united states that i think is is just some of the most beautiful country that you can find anywhere in the world um, so i have all of our guaranteed departures that we're running this year i think the one that's most exciting for me to promote uh is the one that we're going to be talking about today which is gems of utah um and really it's for a few reasons number one is we're based out of salt lake this is our home hometown here we love showing off utah um, it has such a diverse, you know, climate and landscape. There's so much to do, so much to see here. And it's just a, it's a fun state. It, it really is a really fun state. Our number one industry is tourism. Um, number two, um, something kind of exciting about this tour is that we actually designed this in partnership with the Utah Office of Tourism. So where most tours are going to be kind of just seeing the national parks and then cutting it off there. Um, this tour, of course, sees the national parks, but we also have two national monuments in this tour. We have one of the best state parks in the entire country in this tour. We have amazing, amazing uh, resort areas, one of which we'll be visiting, which is Sundance Mountain Resort, of course, owned by Robert Redford. And there's just lots and lots included. So as you can see, the highlights for this um, will be coming in and out of Salt Lake City, which just so you know, we have a brand new airport just got finished this year. It's very easy to get in and out of, lots of great flight times, and it's just, it's beautiful. There's actually a bunch of art all over. We'll be going to the oldest and most popular national park in the state, which is Zion National Park. We'll be going to my favorite national park, which is Bryce. Um, of course, while we're in Moab, we'll go to Dead Horse Point, we'll go to Canyonlands Arches and do the jet boat ride. Um, and then the two national monuments that we'll be going to is the Jurassic and Dinosaur National Monument. So, um, not only are all your entrance fees included, not only is it a fully guided tour, um, but all of your uh, airfare uh, transfers are included as well, round trips, so to and from Salt Lake International Airport, all of your luggage handling is included for every hotel that we'll be visiting, breakfast every morning is included, I think we have a total of 10 meals included for this tour, um, so lots and lots included. So. Um, obviously, there's a lot to talk about, Sandy. I don't know if you want to get started on day one here. Or... Yeah, you can get started. Let me, um, I'm going to give a big picture overview for everybody um, and explain one thing that I probably should have explained at the beginning. So the reason why we partner with wonderful companies like Western Leisure and Cosmos in our um, previous um, uh, Tour Tuesdays, we talked about some other companies that we partner with, Mayflower Tours, etc. cetera, is um, when we want to do a fly package, okay, um, we are not experts in putting together fly packages. We're experts in putting together bus tours that leave from Philadelphia and New Jersey and Northern Delaware. Um, and we're not experts in these areas. And that's where these companies like Western Leisure and Cosmos come in because we know that we can rely on them to put together a fabulous tour from start to finish. Um, they help with everything from picking you up from the airport to um, putting you together with other people. Um, that's another reason is, you know, we it would be hard for us to sell a full bus, you know, 40, 45, 50 people on a tour like this. So they've got existing departures and we can send five, 10, 15 or 20 of you. We don't have to have a whole, a whole bus load for, of people from STAR. So there, there's two key reasons that we use these partners. Um, again, one is their expertise in, in putting together a package tour of the area that we wanna visit where we don't have that expertise. And the second reason is we don't have to send a whole busload of, of folks on a tour like that. We could just send five or 10 of you and they bring in the other folks as well. So just wanted to um, give that as a big picture overview and Ryan, you can just jump right into the Gems of Utah itinerary. Yeah, yeah. And to um, kind of expand on that too, just so you guys know, this tour has gained so much popularity. We've already hit our minimum. So it's not a schedule. It is a guaranteed departure at this point. 
it will be running. And I honestly, I think we only have a few seats left. Left, Sandy. I think you guys maybe have four seats left as all. So, yep. um, you know, after this webinar, if it does interest you, I would say call Sandy immediately and make sure you guys reserve your seats right away because it is selling fast. People are excited to come to Utah this year. That's for sure. Um, so yeah, so let's go ahead and start with day one here. So everybody will be arriving, like I mentioned before, at the brand new Salt Lake uh, International Airport. Beautiful, um, like I said, lots to do, lots to see there. Once you guys arrive, um, you guys will be meeting our Western Leisure Tour Guide there at the airport. Um, once everybody arrives, um, we'll go ahead and board the coach and you guys will be staying at the Holiday Inn Express in downtown Salt Lake. So you'll be right in the heart of everything. And um, once we get downtown, you guys will have a chance to check in Kind of get freshened up and then we'll begin our our first tour which is going to be a city tour of salt lake so our first thing we'll see are the historic avenues um and on those i mean you're going to see very unique very old houses there some of those are actually on the historic register um, there's amazing architecture all throughout um and it's just really small roads steep hills i mean it, it's just a very interesting area eventually we'll make our way to utah's capitol building um, and once we arrive here, I mean, you'll see why it's consistently ranked as one of the most beautiful capitals in the entire country. So we'll walk the grounds first, then we'll go inside. And inside, I mean, you guys are going to see stunning rooms that are completely designed with hand carved marble. We'll put you under the 250 foot dome that has murals painted all above you. Um, and then we'll end the tour um, outside the front door of the Capitol building, which has spectacular views of both mountain ranges that uh, surround Salt Lake. And it's just a beautiful picturesque spot right there. After that, we'll tour the University of Utah. We'll then go to This is the Place Monument, which that's the tribute to the spot where Brigham Young and his followers decided that Salt Lake City was going to be the place for Mormon settlers to call their home. They also just went under a multi-million dollar renovation, huge gift shop, huge uh, visitor center over there as well and of course amazing statues all throughout that entire area and of course we'll end it at historic temple square you can't call it a trip to salt lake city without going to temple square right so um, when you guys get here this year it'll be during a really interesting time they are in the middle of a five-year multi multi-million dollar uh renovation and when we get there, the actual temple, which if you've never seen it, I mean, it's a massive, massive building. It'll be about eight to 10 feet up in the air on some stilts. So it is, it's a sight to see. Of course, you guys will get to see where the Tabernacle Choir sings. Uh, you'll get to go to historic buildings like the Brigham Young building, but eventually we'll end up there at the temple. And it is, it's, it's impressive to see what they have going on over there. Uh, money is no object. That is for sure. It is. What are uh, they lifting uh, it for, Ryan? Did they lift that? it? Are they moving it, or are they just lift, making it taller, or what are they doing? No, they. Um, so there, uh, there is a basement that is, you know, no one's allowed to see. So I, I really can't tell you what's under there, but um, it's an underground area, and I think some of it is structural, some some of it's architectural. Um, but there's a certain process. It's not just redoing it. There's a certain process that they have to go about um, for you know, religious purposes um, in which, why are they having to do it? So it could be a two-year project, but because of the way they have to do it, it's a five-year project. Wow. And it's, it's impressive. It's really, really neat. So it's still a beautiful area, but there is construction going on over there. That's for sure. Um, and then we will end our night uh, with an included welcome dinner at a restaurant downtown. And uh, we'll have some special stuff, stuff set up for you guys uh, at the restaurant there. And that's how we're gonna do it in day one. Um, so day two, we're gonna go all the way from Northern Utah all the way to Southern Utah with our first stop being in Springdale, which is really the, the true gateway into Zion National Park. So when we get there, uh, we'll uh, drop you guys off and you'll have free time to kind of explore, kind of have lunch on your own. And then we'll eventually hop on the, the new way to get to the park, which is a shuttle reserve system, which we'll have all lined up already. Hop on the shuttles and we'll go into the entrance and end up getting to the temple of uh, Sinawaba. Um, so for hikers and outdoor enthusiasts, this is the gateway for the Narrows hiking trail. That's the hiking trail where you see people walking through the river in very, very narrow spots. Um, as far as you guys are concerned, you'll actually get a chance to walk on the paved river walk. So you will be surrounded with 2,000 foot and vertical feet, steep red canyon walls. There's lush green forest 
and a beautiful river kind of all throughout all on that paved uh, river walk uh, inside the canyon walls there. Out of all five Utah national parks, Zion is by far and away the most popular. And honestly, it's for good reason. I mean, the beauty alone is just breathtaking, but it's also because there's just so many amazing and iconic hikes all throughout the park there. And really there are not many other places like it. It is absolutely gorgeous. So we will spend, um, I think right around two to three hours in the park. You guys are gonna be right in the heart of all of it. It's absolutely beautiful and it's all paved. Uh, river walk with signs along the way that kind of talk about what you guys are looking at there. Um, and then once we're done there, we will go through the tunnel in between Bryce and Zion, end up staying the night in Bryce Canyon City, and we'll be staying at Ruby's, which is the nicest hotel uh, in Bryce Canyon. And that's where we'll end day two. For day three, after breakfast, we are going to head straight into Bryce Canyon National Park. Like I said, my personal favorite out of the Mighty Five. Um, so once you guys arrive, you have time to visit the visitor center. And then after that, we're going to head right on to the rim trail. And this is where you guys have a chance to view the amazing hoodoos that Bryce is so well known for. Um, there's also a really neat feature, uh, that's called the Bryce amphitheater. It's basically a, a hoodoo filled depression, um, that's right below the rim trail there. So it's absolutely amazing. I'm sure you guys are going to recognize it from pictures you've seen, but there was really nothing like seeing it in person. It's absolutely amazing. And really, it's kind of indescribable. It's, it's just the colors, the hoodoos, it's all just beautiful over there. Uh, before we leave Bryce, we will go to some other lookouts as well. And the last lookout we go to will also have an included picnic lunch for everybody inside the park there. Um, so after that, we will head off and our next de destination is going to be Moab. Uh, which is kind of the adventure capital uh, of Utah. So before we go to downtown Moab, we're going to stop at, one again, once again, my, my most uh, favorite state park in the country, which is Dead Horse Point State Park. Uh, once we arrive there, there's tons of hiking trails. There's a really nice visitor center there as well. But my favorite spot at Dead Horse would have to be the Dead Horse Point Overlook. Um, this is where, once again, you're right around 2,000 vertical feet above the Colorado River. Um, you can see the, the expanse of massiveness of Canyonlands National Park, and there's just a ton of beautiful landscape everywhere. I think it's, it's over 5,000 acres uh, Dead Horse State Park is, and it's just absolutely gorgeous over there. Um, so after we have some time there, we will go to our hotel, which is going to be at the Fairfield Inn, which the Fairfield Inn once again, one of the better properties in all of Moab. There's two huge pools there. There's five hot tubs. There's waterfalls outside. Your rooms are huge and brand new looking. Um, and they always do a, an amazing job with our groups over there. I love that hotel. I was actually just there about a month ago. And they are serving a full, complete hot breakfast over there, just so you know, Gene. So the breakfast over there is awesome. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that's how we end day three. Uh, for day four, uh, we'll head straight into one of the most visited national parks in the country, which is Arches National Park. Um, your hotel is basically going to be right across the street from the entrance over there. Um, so before we drive deep into the park, you get a chance to visit the 18,000 square foot visitor center uh, because it's really the best way to learn about, you know, why there's so many arches in, in, that exist in that, one, in that one small area. So you'll learn all about the arches, kind of about what the landscape looks like over there. Over there. And then after some time at the visitor center, we'll then begin traveling inside the park uh, with views of many of the, of the landmarks over there. And we'll also have three stops while we're there to kind of get out and explore. So the first stop is gonna be at Balanced Rock. If you've never seen Balanced Rock, it basically looks like this massive, massive boulder. And it's balanced about 500 to 1,000 feet in the air on this little tiny small point. It looks like it's about to fall on you. Uh, but it's not. It's been there for years and years and years. Uh, the phys physics of it do not make sense, but that's what Balanced Rock looks like. The second stop we'll make will be at the Windows, which is the largest collection of arches in one spot. So you'll see the North Window, the Turret Arch, and then the Double Arch. And then lastly, uh, we'll see uh, our last stop is going to uh, see the backside of what's called Delicate Arch. And this is the arch that you see on all of our Utah license plates. Um, so you can go hike all the way up to the top. It's a pretty grueling hike all the way up to arch to that arch. So we'll do a flat path 
to the back of it in which you can kind of see the back of it and look up at it. Uh, very mild hiking, not, not a whole lot. Most of these, just so you guys know, you can see right from the bus, so you don't have to get out if you don't want to. So after a very full morning uh, inside of Arches National Park, we'll head to downtown Moab and you guys will have a chance for some free time and some lunch on your own. And really about uh, the good chunk of the afternoon, you guys will just have some free time because it really is a good, the, good, the best way to, to see Moab. So you can either hang out downtown and explore the many shops and, and, and retail and stuff like that that they have down there. You can book, um, I mean, horseback rides, Hummer rides, guided hiking, four by four rentals, or you can just go back to the hotel and, and hang out by the hot tub in the pool. I mean, whatever, whatever you want to do. It's kind of your way to, to personalize your own tour there. Um, after that, tonight, you'll rejoin back up with the group once again. And uh, we're going to enjoy a delicious barbecue on the banks of Colorado, Colorado River with a group called Canyonlands by Night. So um, after we eat uh, an included dinner there on the banks of the Colorado River, and it starts to get a little bit darker, um, that's when the tour really starts. So once it's completely dark, they illuminate the canyon wall. Um, there's lights, there's shadows, there's music, and it's fully narrated. They'll talk about stories of the canyon's formation, the creation of it all, and the history of the area's earlier settlers as well. It is a full-on night tour. And the reason we choose this one instead of the other ones that are in the area is because no matter the water level, this one can always run. It, it runs very high in the water, so the river doesn't have to be too deep just in case the water level is low. Um, so that's the way we're going to end night four. So for day five, um, we're going to be spending our time in Carbon County for day five. So if fossils and dinosaurs are your thing, you're going to love what today has in store for you. Um, so our first stop is going to be at Jurassic National Monument, which contains the densest concentration of Jurassic Age dinosaur bones ever found. Um, I think I read they have about 12,000 um, bones that have been excavated in just the one quarry that's there. So during our time here, you guys can explore active dig sites, um, as well as kind of the main attraction, which is really this pit that there's hundreds and hundreds of different animals uh, all in one spot that basically suggests that there was a massive flash flood and it killed all the animals and it was basically quickly covered with the gravel and it, now it's there and preserved for you guys to see. Uh, there's really no other site like that I've ever seen in the world and it's something that everyone can appreciate uh, no matter what you're into once you kind of see it in person. Um, so after our time at the monument, you'll then get some free time and lunch on your own in the historic town of Helper, Utah. Uh, and Helper has a pretty cool history. Um, it all kind of is, is centered around the Rio Grande Western Railroad, and it got its, its name from a fleet of Helper engines that were stationed at the mouth of Price Canyon, basically ready and waiting to assist the trains on their way to Soldier Summit. So they couldn't get all the way up that summit with just one engine. They had to have, you know, Helper engines to help them motor up the canyon there. And that's the way that they got their name. So the best place to talk about the story of Helper is, of course, at the museum in Helper called the Western Mining and Railroad Museum, which is going to be our next stop over there. So the museum was originally the old Helper Hotel. It was built all the way back in 1913. And now it houses a very, very eclectic uh, collection. There's railroad memorabilia. Um, they, they have like this interactive area that discusses um, the earlier settlers that came from uh, Greece to basically uh, run the helper engines. And there's also some really funky stuff there. Um, there's there's a, a spot that I like to call the, door, the doctor's torture chamber. Uh, and really it's a spot that there's tools and medieval looking medical equipment that's there to, that basically was there to, you know, to help take care of the, the railroad workers if they were to get injured, injured on site there. So it's kind of a quirky museum. I think it's kind of unexpected. I think you guys will, will really like it when you get there. And then after that, we'll head off to Vernal for the rest of the night where the evening is freed up for you guys to kind of enjoy Vernal on your own. And that will take us to our last uh, full day on this tour. So first thing in the morning, we'll go to our second national monument, which is going to be the Dinosaur National Monument. This is based right along the Green River on what used to be a huge floodplain. And the museum has, you know, completed skeletons of dinosaurs. It has interactive exhibits, but really the star of the museum is an 80 foot, it's a really long excavated hillside 
um, that remains basically there the same way that they found it. So instead, instead of digging up all the bones, they dug to where the bones are, and then they just um, made it a, a exposed hillside and then covered it. And that's most of what the museum is. It's it's amazing. Um, it's so it's a huge deposit of fossils all mixed together. Um, and you'll see all sorts of different species that were buried together. It's once again, very unique, one of a kind monument that's unlike anywhere else in the entire world. And then our last main attraction for our last day here is gonna be the beautiful Sundance Mountain Resort. So on our way here, it's just basically gonna be a half a day of some of the most picturesque stuff that you've ever seen. So on our way there, we'll get a pass by the 600 foot um, Bridal Veils Falls. We'll also go through the very steep and very narrow Provo Canyon. Once again, just amazing through there. And we will eventually arrive at, um, at Sundance Mountain Resort. So once we arrive there, you guys will have some very unique places to eat. Uh, one of my favorite places is called the Tree Room. It looks like kind of a fort built on the side of the mountainside there. And they actually have really high end, really delicious food over there. Um, and if you guys want, there's also a ski chairlift that will be running. And that will take you to the top of the mountain. You guys can see the 12,000 foot Mount Tipinogos Mountain over there. Um, and really Sundance is just known for being one of the most beautiful areas in Utah. It's where the Sundance Film Festival um, started before it got too large and then moved on to Park City. And it's also uh, owned and operated by Robert Redford uh, and along with some other celebrities that live in the area as well. So after our time there, uh, tonight we'll make our way back to Salt Lake City for a fun well farewell dinner. We're gonna go to Cafe um, Melisse. It's a historic building in downtown Salt Lake. It's gonna, they're gonna serve us some amazing Italian food. We'll have some fun surprises for us when we get there as well. And uh, that's how we're going to end the tour. So day seven, sadly, uh, the tour will end. We'll have included transfers to take you guys back to the international airport and uh, make your way uh, back home again. That's excellent. That sounds amazing. Thank you so much, Ryan. That was absolutely- Of course. But Hopefully it wasn't too long. Sorry if I spoke too much. It's an easy <laughs> place to talk about. <laughs> it was great. It was great. Thank you so much. Does anyone have any questions for Ryan? This is your chance. <laughs> and Ryan was right. This trip is almost is almost sold out. We just have a few seats left um, in our block of, of space. Um, on the bus and then Ryan has just a couple seats left as well. So it's great, um, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, there's just a few seats left. Any questions yet? What, when do you start paying on this trip normally? Um, you're gonna make a deposit, a $300 deposit to book and then the final payment, uh, Chris would have to answer that. Um, I don't know if Chris knows off the top of her head, but it's gonna be fairly soon. I would say probably in June sometime. Okay. Ryan, um, yes. this is Dean calling, uh, speaking. Um, you mentioned that you have uh, the after arches, there's a lunch or there's a, Mo, uh, the city of Moab has many places for lunch. Is that correct? They do, yeah. So we'll drop you guys off downtown Moab where the visitor center is. And around there, there's about eight different restaurants that you guys can eat at. Okay. Sandy, I'm getting an idea. <laughs> I see that, Gene. The Booty tour. <laughs> the smoke is coming from your head, Gene. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions for Ryan? All right, Ryan, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. I would like to introduce our next presenter and that is Barbara Canizio. Uh, she's Hello. <laughs> Barbara is business development manager for Cosmos, another longtime partner of ours. Um, when Cosmos um, and its sister companies, you may heard, have heard of either Cosmos or Globus, maybe Avalon Waterways, but when they need buses in the general Philadelphia area, they use Starbuses. So it's a nice two-way relationship. 
that we have. Um, so Barbara, take it away. Tell us a little bit about yourself and about Cosmos. Hello, everyone. How are you? Um, so I am the BDM. I've been with this company for almost 16 years. I've been in the industry for way longer than that, so we won't talk about that. Um, so Cosmos is a part of the Globus family of brands, which has four brands underneath it. So Globus and Cosmos, which is our escorted to our programs. And as you said, Sandy, we have an incredible program with uh, Avalon Waterways and then an independent uh, company that's called Monograms. But for this purpose, Cosmos, let me stop here. Globus has been in business for 93 years. So we really do have this down to a T. Uh, we started in Lugano, Switzerland, uh, which was just a jump, skip, hop away from Italy, which is where really Globus began its really big push into navigating what the company is now. So that being said, I, I really wanted to say, first of all, Thank you, Ryan, because I actually think that the uh, national parks are a treasure and that everybody should go see that. But for my portion of this, we're going to take you on a journey to a different part of the world. I wanted to reiterate the importance of having partnerships. Uh, partnerships make the world go round, and that is no different in the travel industry. And so when suppliers like myself and agencies such as Sandy, when they combine their forces in their partnerships, you, the consumer, are the beneficiary of the partnership that is, that is founded. Um, the best progressive, promotional, anything that we do as a supplier, we give the most aggressive to the to the travel agent industry and that is really invaluable to you because not only are you getting all of these incredible uh, promotional things but for you the consumer when you're traveling the most important thing you can have is a travel agent behind you and i think that's been playing out year after year after year and coming out of where we're coming out of now I think that that's been magnified a million times. So good for you for using STAR. Um, I think that's really important in the partnership that uh, both my company and Ryan's company has with STAR. So that's a little bit about us. And uh, what we're going to be doing today is, and magic goes, Sandy, you want to put it up? We're good. We're good. Uh, no, we haven't. Yeah, I got you. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. It's all good. It's all it's good. It's all good. <laughs> so as I said, we're going to take you to another part of the world, and we're going to visit a Cosmos program, which is the seven countries, Venice and Paris. So this is what we call a panoramic uh, vacation. Uh, we have various ways that we deliver our product. Uh, and panoramic is one of it. And so obviously panoramic means a, a wide scope and that's exactly what this is going to do. Seven countries, this is an incredible, that's um, it really is. You know what's so beautiful about this is that if you haven't visited these countries, you get to sample the beauty and, and what the country has to offer to you. And then somewhere down the road, you can decide, well, you know, was it Venice that I really want to go back to see? Is it, do I want to spend time in London more? You get to get, it's a tasting of all of these places. And, and so from there, you can decide whether or not you want to spend extra time in the countries. So what does this pack include? It's nine breakfasts, three dinners, you get a tour director plus a bus driver plus your local guide. So you have plenty of people who are supporting this um, from the vantage point of being on a tour. This is round trip air from Newark uh, and airport transfers are included along with baggage handling and related gratuities for sky caps. So 
look at where you're going to be visiting. You're going to be visiting England. You're going to be visiting Belgium. You're going to be visiting Paris and uh, Italy. It's a really beautiful, beautiful, beautiful program. So day one, when you land, and I believe that uh, she has uh, the red eye book for you, which is wonderful because you will arrive in London and you will have a full day to explore London on your own. And um, we love that because we want to give you the comfort of having an organized tour, but the leisure ability to go out on your own and to experience the culture. Go see what it is that interests you. You know, go on foot, go on subway or whatever it is that you want to do and investigate the area. So you're going to check into your hotel. We will have uniform hosts that will be there to help you with anything and everything you could possibly want. What do you want to do? What's available? What's close? How to get there? All the ins and out. Um, I also want to let you know that with a Cosmos, you're going to be given um, a, a little device that will um, be your headpiece. But with that headpiece comes augmented um, like a GPS system. So if you're in London and you want to go see something, you just go to uh, the tab that says, you know, attractions, and you can actually uh, download how to get by foot or by public transportation from point A to point B. So it's a really great, great tool for you. It'll have your whole itinerary downloaded. Every day is downloaded. Uh, it's just a great program. So you're never going to get lost. So that's your first day. You're going to check into your hotel. You're going to make the best of whatever it is you want to do. And then on day two, it's all about London. It's a full day to savor the rich programs, the optional activities. And for those of you who haven't been to London, obviously it's got some incredible landmarks such as the Tower of London, or the excursion to Windsor Castle. Uh, you know, it is, um, it's really illuminating. Um, there are a few things that actually surprised me many, many years ago when I went to London the first time. One of them, we all hear about Big Ben, Big Ben, and it's a beautiful, beautiful landmark. However, Big Ben actually is just the name of the bell. The actual tower is called the clock tower. So the myths and the, and the stories that come with actually visiting and getting the inside stories. Sorry. That's what all of that is about with the, uh, the touring, is getting all of the insights. Your tour directors, your local tour guides are there to bring it all to life for you. You can visit the Tower of London, which is a 900-year-old castle. It's a fortress, it's in central London. It's actually notable for housing all of the jewels and famous and infamous prisoners. So the Bridge of Sigh, which you will see also, uh, the Bridge of Sigh was named not for any other reason that when prisoners were being taken from the time they were convicted to the prisons, they had to cross over the Bridge of Sigh. And so when they were crossing over, they went, huh, and hence was the name of the Bridge of Sai. So really cool stuff like that. You have a chance to visit Windsor Castle, which we all know is the home to the queen. Uh, and it's over 900 years of history. So some pretty cool things. At nighttime, we would suggest that you take the uh, illuminating cruise on the Thames River. I have to say I've done this um, and it's really incredible as it is everywhere to see things in the daylight and then to actually travel on a cruise down the Thames River and see the illumination, parliament buildings and the Bridge of Sai and all of the beautiful um, buildings that line the river. And at nighttime, it just comes to life. Uh, it's just a really beautiful thing. Uh, for you to do. So that would be that. So on day two, uh, that is what you'll be doing. And then day, day three, we're going to be leaving London and we're going to go into Brussels. 
which obviously is in Belgium. Uh, we're gonna transfer it to the railroad and we're gonna board the Eurostar train to Brussels. So for anybody who hasn't taken the train system in Europe, this is going to be a treat for you because I don't even know how you explain the very, very organized chaos that the European travel uh, train system is. It's massive and it's, um, it's really quite incredible to experience. So you're gonna get onto the train and you're gonna arrive in Brussels. You're gonna switch over to a very comfortable motor coach for an orientation drive through Belgium, which is the capital. So in Brussels, you know that this was, um, Brussels has been, it's an incredible history with Brussels. Um, it's been ruled by many, many different uh, rulers, uh, renaissances and revolutions. It is also, as we all know, renowned for its chocolate, its waffles, their beer, but it's also home to NATO, which is headquarters, right? The NATO headquarters. And it's also the European Parliament um, headquarters for the EU. So it actually plays a very important historical and present role in every day. So uh, I love I love Belgium. It's one of my favorite places to go. So on day four, we're going to hit the road again and we're going to go from Brussels. We're going to take a Rhine cruise and we're going to end up in the Frankfurt area. So for those of you who don't know the Rhine River, it is notorious for its beauty. It's lined with castles. It is just breathtaking to do. Uh, it's a it's a must see, the Rhine. So you're gonna journey into Germany. You're gonna see the shores of the mighty Rhine, um, which is included on this scenic tour. And then on to Frankfurt for an overnight stay. So we're gonna have an overnight uh, stay in Frankfurt. And from Frankfurt, we're gonna go into Rothenburg, Innsbruck area, Australia. And a little bit about Rothenburg, which is a town that I've actually visited multiple times. And it truly is a marvel because this area is actually, um, it's actually, God, it, it's so picturesque. It's a barbarian town, it's colorful. It has historical buildings. It's lined with cobblestone streets. There's vines that crawl up the side of the medieval buildings because you are in a medieval town. And it's actually frozen in time as far as that is concerned. There's street vendors all over. Uh, so it's a very hustle and bustle area with such a beautiful underlying um, sense of history and being in the medieval times. It's really fascinating. For anybody who has never been to a, um, a medieval area, this is absolutely a must see. So from there, we're going to go into Innsbruck on day six, and we're gonna end up in the Venice area of Italy. So, you know, the Innsbruck area, uh, you have multiple, opportunities to take in the breath, breathtaking scenery of the Alps, because it's all about the scenery, the Alps, the mountains, it's beautiful. Uh, and then as we go through, we will arrive into Venice. And in Venice, we all know uh, that this is the capital of Northern Italy's Veneto region. And actually it was built more than a hundred, it's built on more than 100 small islands in the lagoon on the Adriatic Sea. So it's just one island of a hundred. It has no roads, it's all about the canals. And the most important canal is the Grand Canal thoroughfare. So this is the, the main quote unquote road. Uh, it's lined with the Renaissance and Gothic palaces. This central square of Piazza San Marco, it, this is where um, St. Mark Basilica is located. So there's so much to see in Venice. It's actually breathtaking. 
there's you'll be exposed to the arts and to so many vendors and all of the beautiful things that Venice has to and of course there's always the gondolas right so be sure that you do that one of the things that I really wanted to say you're going to have the opportunity to do a glass uh, blowing workshop and I have done this a couple of times so I was fascinated absolutely fascinated this is such an old art and how they how they turn this into the beautiful um, bowls and, and, and all of the beautiful artwork is amazing. And you'll have a chance to shop around and to pick up some of the uh, beautiful products that they make. But I strongly, strongly, strongly suggest you take your camera out or your video and, and make sure you get this on camera because it is beautiful. So from the Venice area, on day seven, we're going to go into Verona and then into Lucerne, uh, which is in Switzerland. So Verona, which is really a beautiful old town, it's also renowned for Shakespeare's uh, Romeo and Juliet. You'll get to visit the little, um, it's actually quite small. It is the balcony that Juliet was known to Romeo, Romeo, where are the Romeo? Anyway, so you'll get to see that. It's actually quite nice. And you can see the views of Canton Ticino and then on to breathtaking beauty of Lake Lucerne. So Switzerland and Italy have a lot in common because this area of Canton Ticino actually takes on, and if you can't tell, I'm Italian, it takes on uh, the breath of Italy. And for my company, this is actually how we got started. Our company's headquarter is actually in Lugano, Switzerland. And the company started by going from Lugano to Italy in an open boat. Uh, so this is a very special area for us and something that I think everybody should see. Lucerne is absolutely beautiful. Lugano, Switzerland is beautiful. Switzerland as a whole is probably one of my most admired country. I have been there multiple times and I have to tell you, honestly, I would go back in a heartbeat. The beauty that is Switzerland is it's just can't be compared to anything the alps everything that they have to offer so you'll have a day there in switzerland uh, and please enjoy it because it is what it is and lake lucerne which is really known for uh its beauty and its blue waters uh it's really quite unexpected to see this they have incredible parks there the people are genuine there's art there's crafts there's history everything you can want, uh, you can get in Switzerland. And then from there, we're gonna take off from the Alps and we're gonna go into um, the area of Dijon, France. So what is Dijon, France? Most people say, okay, I've heard about the Burgundy region, but what's in the Burgundy region? And Dijon is the capital city of the historical Burgundy region in eastern France. So it's one of the country's principal wine making areas, which you will have the opportunity to visit. Uh, it's known for its traditional mustards, its vineyards, its autumn gastronomic fairs, because it's all about food and taste. Uh, they have a lot of fairs that go on there. There's a lot of um, things that you could pick up from uh, for um, to take home as member uh, memorabilia, and styles styles here are ranging from Gothic to Art Deco, so you really get the full gamut of what Dijon is. And then from there, we're going to go on to Paris, and we're going to take the order route to Paris to discover many of the best known. Parisian sites and included guided sightseeing tours. So Notre Dame, the Louvre, Arc de Triomphe, the Seine River, uh, La Rive Gauche. Uh, you have Paris, which is the center of fashion, 
French food, French wine. It's all there. It's really beautiful. And then from there, it's au revoir. Your vacation is ending, but we invite you back to uh, visit another part of Europe. And that's what we have for you on the seven countries. That sounds fabulous. It's so, it's so incredible to visit Europe. It You're really good. is, because every country has its own personality. So to jump from one to one and you get a taste of everything, it's, it's really an incredible opportunity. Yes, we actually had um, somebody from our office, um, one of our staff members in the tour services department, she went on this trip in 2019. And she, she said, I can't come tonight because I have dinner plans, but please make sure you tell everybody how wonderful the trip was and how much she loved it. And, you know, and, our, and our own Chris, Chris Corcos, who all of you will be talking to if you wanna book this trip, um, she is also planning to go on this trip this summer. So um, it's definitely a popular trip. I mean, uh, in the research that we've done to find a trip that hits so many countries um, is, is so hard to do. And, and this is a bestseller for us. And I know it's a bestseller for you. And there's a reason why, because- people Yeah, and I, I wanna just insert the importance of our tour directors and our, because our tour directors They've been with us as, you know, it's an average of 23 years. So that's a, that's a story in itself. But the beauty of these tour directors is they really orchestrate the vacations and they're highly knowledgeable, really knowledgeable. So they really bring all of these places to life for you. They bring you the history. They bring you the stories. They really delve into the culture. And I have to say, it's um, been doing this a long time. This is what makes a tour. Uh, the people that, that do the back end of it, and that's our tour directors. Mm -hmm. So you're in good hands. Absolutely. Barbara, can you, can you talk about, um, this is the type of tour where, um, you know, the, the guts, the transportation, the hotels, and a few, um, attractions are included, but explain how um, there's so many options of, you know, of things for people to do so that they can get their own flavor and how maybe how much they should budget for those options and things like that. So uh, again, it, this, this is, we create these so that you have the flexibility of deciding what it is that you want to get out of a vacation, how much you want to be on your own and how much you want to actually go in with a optional excursion. So for, for this particular one, you have a lot of opportunities to go out on your own. Uh, so that if there's something that you specifically wanted to see, you can do that on your own and we will help you do that. But if there is like the Louvre, let's say the Louvre and the Paris, if you wanted to go in there and there's a tour, I would strongly suggest that you do that. So what I would suggest to you is you make a list of the things that you actually are very, very excited to go in and you want somebody to give you the stories and you want to be guided. I would actually say that on any given day, uh, you might want to take one optional. They can range in price from $25 to maybe I don't know, 50 or 60, depending on what it is. So if you're doing uh, this type of, of, of vacation, then you, you might want to do budget for maybe another three or $400, if that's what you want to do. But I do promise you, you have the opportunity to get from point A to point B on your own independently when you have downtime. And that's where, uh, you know, our app comes in. Because like I said before, your itinerary will be downloaded into this. And it's a, you know, you'll get, you'll get the opportunity to, it's actually a little piece that you wear around your neck. And it's how you hear um, our tour directors and our local guides, but it acts also as a GPS and it acts specifically to your itinerary. 
So if you're game to waking up and you have free time, you just punch in the attraction and you can get from point A to point B. It's not, um, it's very independent on what you want as an individual. I think you're very, very safe and probably putting about $35 a day extra if you wanted to join you know, an optional excursion. Excellent. Thank you for that. Um, but but you will have, just to make it clear, you will have um, staff there that will help guide us to an, an, an excursion or, you know, help talk to us and help find the excursion okay. that we might like the most, even yes. if we don't come with a preformed idea of what we want to do. So take. on on the tour, the, this is where the tour director becomes invaluable. He will let you know the day before what is going to be available the next day. He will give you a full schedule. He'll give you a full description of what is going to be offered and they will give you the opportunity to sign up for it. But even if you want to do that prior, so just before you're ready to leave, you'll get an email and the email will say, um, you know, we're open. You can book anything that you want to book that you know prior to your departure. So there's two different ways of actually creating your own itinerary. Um, but by far, the tour director will absolutely guide you and let you know the day before what's coming up the next day. And if you decide not to do anything, there's always somebody there to direct you to say, hey, you know what? Maybe you want to do this. Do you want tickets to a play? Do you want to go see the opera? Do you want to go do X, Y, and Z? And they will, they will absolutely point the finger uh, to guide you the right way. Excellent. Excellent. Um, I'm going to open up for questions for a second, but I also just want to point out that we do highly recommend travel insurance. Um, you can buy any travel insurance you want, but we recommend travel insurance through NTA or the National Tour Association's Travel Protection Plan, which is administered by Aon Affinity. And uh, Chris will give you that information when you book or it's here as well. You can get a quote online or you can call to get a quote either way. And um, we highly recommend that you, you do purchase travel, uh, some kind of travel insurance or protection. So um, I wanted to point that out. And then when you're ready to book, um, you can book with Miss Chris Corco. She is on the call tonight. And we did have some coupons that expired on April 30th. Um, however, because you are attending tonight, um, a special, special deal is that I will allow these coupons to be used through Friday. So if you mention these coupons, um, I believe both tours would be, uh, our seven days are longer. So you can, anybody on this trip would be able to save $30. So highly recommend um, booking by Friday. And then just to go back um, to the beginning, um, the final payment for the Gems of Utah trip the, is coming up and that's June 1st. And then the final payment for this uh, seven countries trip is due June 11th. So $300 to book. And then the final payment is due again, either June 1st for Gems of Utah or June 11th for the uh, seven countries trip. Does anybody have any questions for Barbara? Gail posted a question in chat. Ah, Gail, has, uh, Gail had a question. Um, Gail would like some guidance on the weather and the, and the type of dress um, for both trips. So I'll let yes. you answer Barbara. So for Europe, in this area, you're, you're leaving uh, in, you can compare their weather with our weather. Um, so it's really quite easy for you to do that. I always suggest when you're in Europe to layer, it's all about the layering because they will have, you know, just like we do the colder mornings or the, you know, at nighttime, it gets a little chillier. Uh, so it's casual. But I also think, you know, layering is what it's all about. It really is. So you could take things off if you get warm and you can put them back on when you get cold. 
Yeah. And um, thank you. That's, and I will give the same answer for the um, Gems of Utah trip. Uh, um, end of September, beginning of October does start to get chilly at night. Um, but during the day, you know, depending on where the sun is at a, at a certain time, you just want layers, always layers. Absolutely. And comfortable shoes. Oh my God, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so remember when you're doing a tour with us, this really is about getting out and mingling with the, you know, with the locals, getting the culture, soaking it in. And it really is casual. So, you know, pants and a t-shirt, you don't need to be dressed for this. What you need to do is just enjoy and get in there and soak up all the culture that they have to offer for you. That's what yeah. it's all about. And honestly, the camaraderie that goes on when you're traveling with like-minded people is amazing because what happens is that you all go out, you do whatever it is you're doing, you get back on the bus and the stories. And you know, what did you do today? What did you do today? Friendships really have been cultivated. Funny story, I just had six people at my home over the weekend that I met on an Italy tour about four years ago. And the eight, you know, the eight people, we call ourselves the eight amigos. We're from different states, but we, we've become so close that we've been traveling together now for three years. And that's really what happens. It's such a beautiful way to enjoy one another. That's just yeah. an added bonus. <laughs> I agree. I agree. That's everything about a star trip. You know, it's like when you travel on a, on a bus in close quarters and you're sharing, you know, uh, stories at the, at the dinner table, at the breakfast table and the lunch table, you really do make some nice friendships and, and you just have um, different experiences, which are really neat. You know, really. you're all there for the same reason. You all chose to do whatever was of interest to you. So you automatically have a common bond. You know, it's just a beautiful, it's a beautiful experience. It really is. Excellent. Thank you. We have time for one more question. This is your chance. <laughs> I guess Barbara and Ryan did such a good job explaining um, the itineraries and talking about these trips that you guys don't have any questions, but it's okay if you do, don't worry about it. Um, Chris is going to be at her phones tomorrow. I'm gonna be in the office. So if you think of any questions, you can call, email, send an SOS. Um, we're here to help you and, and we, want, we want you to be informed before you make a decision and, and you book these vacations because we want you to be as excited about the experience to come as we are in giving you that experience. So I want to thank Barbara and Ryan for, a, for presenting tonight. We are so uh, thankful to have partners like you. Um, it's a two-way street. You know, um, we, we help each other and, and especially now coming out of this uh, crazy time that we just, you know, did, um, we're looking forward to being back on the road again. And, and especially with partners that we know will keep us safe and bring us wonderful memories. So Thank you very much, Barbara and Ryan. I'm going to let Barbara sign off. You guys can wave goodbye. I think Ryan has just signed off as well. And um, I'm going to open up to ask me anything, you know? <laughs> hey, it's Tuesday night. What kind of questions do you have? Do you require that people be vaccinated to go on these trips? That's a great question. Um, on these particular trips. Um, let's start with Gems of Utah. So these national parks, I don't believe have decided whether or not they're going to require vaccinations to go into. But for example, uh, Yellowstone and Grand Canyon are two examples of national parks that are requiring vaccinations. So I would plan on having it if you're going on this trip. Again, as you know, we turn on the news and things change from day to day and it's it's hard to know, but I would, I would plan on having your vaccine. If you, for some reason, are not able to get your vaccine, 
then we will call and double check and see if they know anything um, that, that we don't know. But as of right now, I would plan to have your vaccine for both of this, these trips, definitely for the seven countries, because I believe that the European countries are requiring proof of vaccination. And uh, I believe these national parks will require. So if you don't plan to get your vaccine, um, you do need to let us know that before you book. Thank you for that question. Sandy? Yes, ma'am. The do um is this trip in your um catalog or it, it just popped up? No yes, more. both tri both trips are in our catalog. Are they? Okay. And online. So you can view them online. Probably there's more detail online, but um, they're definitely in the catalog as well. Oh, okay. Does anybody have any questions for Gene? I'll put him on the spot. <laughs> Gene, when's your next trip? I'm going to, um, I'm actually going to Washington, D.C. to the National Zoo on the 5th of June and on the 12th of June to Ellis Island and the Statue of Liberty. And the uh, end of June, the 20th, I'm going to Maine. We're going to Wrangley and moosing, looking for moose Excellent. or meat or mice. I don't know. We're looking for <laughs> Antlers, yeah. <laughs> and Evie, you're going to New England? New Hampshire, June 3rd. It's a four-day trip. And we have a lot of people signed up. I don't know if it's sold out or not, but it's a beautiful trip. We're staying on the lake where they made on Golden Pond. Ooh. Sounds wonderful. We'll order you up perfect weather for those trips, like we do for mm -hmm. all of our trips. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you guys don't have I'll, I'll, any more any more questions before we do our twenty five dollar gift card winner? All right, I want you to turn on your um, video if you're not on, so we can see your face. Pete, hand me the winner. Thank you. The winner is Thomas Worsley. Very good. Congratulations. All right, Thomas, we will be in touch with you about the $25 gift card. Don't spend it all in one place. <laughs> um, so thank you guys so much for coming. Um, we'll be, like I said, we'll be in the office tomorrow. We look forward to answering any more of your questions or helping you book one of these trips or any of our wonderful trips. And we will see you on June 1st when we talk about cruising with Carnival and Norwegian Cruise Lines. So we'll have, a, we'll have guests from Carnival and NCL um, on board with us uh, talking about cruising on June 1st. So we hope to see you then. Thanks everybody for coming. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Excellent. Bye. Good night. Bye -bye.